So I thought it'd be fun to give React Hooks a try. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how you can set up a to-do list, a simple one using useStateHook uh, instead of using class components. Now, if you'd like to follow along, I'm using Create React App. And then after that, you need to upgrade the package that you're using. So this is what it looks like. The current latest version of React is 16.6. Uh, but you cannot use React hooks until 16.7. So what I did is I installed the next version and so I'm able to use them. Um, so all you have to do is run yarn add react at next and react dash dom at next so you have react 16.7. Uh, the other thing is I'm not sure if the TypeScript types are out yet so I'm just using JavaScript for now. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know if they're out because I would love to be using this with TypeScript as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. For those of you that haven't seen it, here is basically the sample of what it looks like. Here I just am rendering a component and it is just a function and I'm using state. So here I'm using the example they have in the docs for a counter. So here we are setting the initial state to a zero and then we can get the value count and that's what we're displaying. And then we have a function here called set count, which when we click on the button, we set the count or the value of the state count and all we do is we take the current count and add one to it. Um, and if we render that, what it looks like is so, and I can click the button and increment, looks cool. All right, so what's up next? Let's start with building a little to-do list. I wanna start by working with a input field and how we can build like a little bit of a form. So I'm gonna create a form.jsx component here and we're gonna import React. And here I'm just gonna export default a function. And now I'm used to writing my pure functions like this, but I'm gonna to have to get used to write them, writing them like this, because now a lot of times we're gonna be putting stuff in the top of our function and then returning JSX, kind of like that. And all right, so I did not mean to put return there. There we go. So we got our curly braces. Um, and what I wanna do is a have a input field and then I want to store the state for that input field. How can I do that? So I'm going to say const and we're going to say value and then we're going to say set value and we're going to say use state. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to say use state and here I'm going to set the initial value to an empty string. So I can pass in the value here and then on change we're going to take the event and we're going to set the value. So e.target target dot value. So now if I come back to the index over here, or I have an app, uh, let's go ahead and just render the form. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the use state here, uh, or the counter that I had. And let's go ahead and import it as well. So import form from dot slash form. And let's see what that looks like. We have our little input field here and now I can type and it's gonna keep the state of my field. Um, so that's pretty nifty. Now, the cool thing about this is you can create all kinds of custom hooks. And I saw a pretty cool custom hook that I liked for creating forms uh, from this rehooks and it was called input or input value. And this is how it works. So you give it an initial value and you can just spread it on. So there's a lot of little libraries that are popping up now. Um, so you can install this, or I thought it'd be pretty cool to see how this is implemented. It's pretty simple, so we can actually implement it ourselves. So what we can do is I'm gonna create a function up here called useInput, and then we can use the same name if we want, useInputValue. And here I'm going to return some stuff. So what we're gonna take here is the initial value, uh, and then we're gonna say const value set value. We can copy what we used right there and we'll pass in our initial value. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna return a value um, and then we're gonna uh, return the on change function. Um, and then we can just say here E, oops. And we're gonna say set value E dot target dot value. All right, and why do we wanna use something like use input value? Well, now we can actually make our lives a little simpler for, or a little simpler. And here we can say, uh, let's say I wanna call this guy text. I'm gonna say use input value. And I'm gonna set the initial value to an empty string. And now instead of passing this like that, I can now just dot 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 text. And so this is pretty nice when you have multiple input fields. 
So for each input, well, let's first verify that this does work. Come over here, type, works okay. So now this is pretty nice when I have multiple input values because now I just copy that. And let's say we want to have an email field. We just create another one and we say email. So for each field that we want, we just use this use input value and that'll return us a value in on change that we can just pass directly to that input. So that's pretty cool. And this is now what your forms can look like um, if you want them to. All right, so pretty nifty. We're gonna be using that to uh, get the text for the to-do item that we want to create. So I'm gonna make this a form and we have our input here. We're gonna have a single input and I'm gonna get rid of the email. So now I'm gonna say on submit, we're gonna take the event and we're gonna say e.prevent default so it doesn't reset the page. And we're gonna take a prop for this. So I'm gonna say on submit and we're just gonna pat we're gonna pass the value of the text. Um, so here's the val here's the text here. We can get the value from that. So I'm gonna say text dot value is what we're gonna pass. Um, to the on submit function. So now in our app over here, I can pass an on submit and now I have the text which I can create a to do with. So let's create the state that for our to do's. So I'm going to say to do's, um, set to do's, and we're going to use use state here. So let's import that. I should have kept the import from before. But anyway, we have that. The initial state for this is going to be just an array. And then here we're going to set the to-dos or basically add a to-do. So I'm going to say, um, let's create an object for it, text, and then complete is false. And then I'm going to say dot 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 to-dos. So what this is going to do is it's just going to create a new array that we're going to set the to-dos value with. At the beginning, we are going to create a new to-do and then we're going to keep all the original to-dos that were there. Now I'm just going to render what the to-dos look like so we can see them. To-dos.map and we're going to say, I'm just going to call it X and now we're going to have a div and we can display it. And actually I'm just going to destructure it. So I'm going to say text and text is what we're going to render here. And for now I'm going to set the key equal to text as well. All right, so we're just mapping through the to-dos that we have and so we can now view them. Um, and so now here's our input field, and now I can say one or whatever one I type. I hit enter, and it's going to submit it to. And you'll notice we can now create items. Uh, one thing I don't like though is the value stays here. I kind of want it to clear the value. So if we come back over to form, we can think about how we might want to do that. So in this case, um, the only way to reset the value or clear the value is to call set value and have pass it an empty string. So maybe I pass here something like reset value. Um, and what that does is it calls set value and then just sets it to an empty string. Now we don't really wanna pass this reset value to the input field here. So I think what we can do here is we can say reset value and we can say dot, dot, dot text. Um, so we destructure the reset value, but we keep everything else in there. Uh, and then I can just call reset value after this. Now I'm not sure if this is the ideal way to do it, but this is one way we can use it. So now I can type in one and I hit enter and it creates an item and clears the input there. So pretty sweet. All right, so one last thing that I wanna do is I wanna be able to click on the item and make it complete and I wanna see it uh, look different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new function up here called toggle complete. And what this is going to do is it's going to take an index, which I'm going to call I. And what we want to do is we want to toggle the complete or toggle the to do, toggle the complete value at this index. So to do that, we're going to say set to do's and we're going to take the current to do's values and map over them. And then for each to do, we're going to look at the uh, current location, which we're going to call K. And if K is equal to I, uh, then we know we need to do stuff. Otherwise, we're just going to return the current to do. So if this is the index of the one we need to change, I'm going to say complete is equal to to do dot complete, and it's going to be equal to the inverse. And then before that, we're just going to keep all the current values of the to do that are in there. Um, and so we're going to say dot 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 to do for that. 
All right, so we're gonna have that toggle complete there. So now all I need to do is have an on click. And so we're just gonna call toggle complete, pass in the index, which is gonna be the second value there of our map. And then lastly, let's go ahead and change the style. So I'm gonna say style, and I wanna say text decoration. And here we're gonna say if the item is complete, so let's destructure complete, complete. There we go. And we're going to say line through. Otherwise, just pass an empty string. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now. I'm going to say one, two, three. And now if I click on that, we have a strike through it. And if I click on it again, we can toggle it back and forth. Awesome. Uh, one last thing I thought that'd be nice is be able to just like reset all the to do's. Um, so we can do that by creating a button. I'm going to call it reset. And now I'm gonna say on click. And we're gonna say set to do's. And I'm gonna set it to an empty array there. And that'll just reset all the values. So now if I create a couple of them and then I click reset, that's kind of interesting. It didn't get rid of them. I wonder if it got messed up because I have multiple values. Yeah, I think it's getting messed up because notice how this and this are the same value. And I set the key. So uh, let's see if we inspect. Yeah, React doesn't like when we use the same key across multiple items. Um, so in this to-do list, let's create some new ones and now reset. That seems to work better. Now in an ideal application, we want to give each to-do a unique ID. That way that doesn't happen, but you get the idea of how this would work. Uh, and we can also go through this and add way more functionality if we wanted to. And the gist of it is we basically call this set to-dos function and then we modify what the current to-dos look like uh, to the value we want. Uh, so that gives you a little idea of how you can use use state. I'm gonna be diving into some of the other functions or other hooks that we can use and seeing uh, how they work.